Ina no sa mane shate ya Mane ni ana ni ana no sa la ba so ya ya E ya ya na ni ana no sa de ka sa ba no sa Ina no sa mano sa ya Kingdom come, kingdom come, kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. True nobility in life is knowing the Lord and walking in his way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you'll be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, a.k.a. It's the Bible Network. For more life-transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. Without wasting time, after the message, we'll be doing introduction and whatever. I want to bring forward... To this exalted altar, God's servant, the choicest servant of God, is my father, is my spiritual mentor, Pastor David Abubakar. is the president of the Living School Ministry and also, aka, eat the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And can you clap for Jesus? Consider, like I always say, life is a privilege. Life is a privilege, and uh, we are we are privileged ones. I want to appreciate God for the life of uh, my brother, boy Emmanuel, and his uh, wife and family. He's a man that have, uh, you know, I know him, and he's a man that have journeyed. He has labored in a lot of places. He has labored in a lot of places. When he told me. They, they will be meeting today. So I actually called him to ask him to come and join us. So when I called him, he said that, ah, that they started one meeting here and it's been the, this is the third time. I said, you shouldn't worry. I'm coming there. So I had to schedule our meeting this morning to 8 o'clock so that we can come and join. I want to see what he's doing here and be part of what he's doing here, identify, identify with him. He has worked in so many, so many big, big places and it was there, he has been asking me that he wants to see me, want to discuss some things with me. He was with us in Abuja. The last uh, meeting we had in Abuja, he came all the way from Ibadan to Abuja. So you can see the heart. When he saw the flyer online, he said, this meeting, he must come for this meeting. That's uh, governing thrones that we did in Abuja. So he was with us there, and uh, we had a nice time in God. So, and he said, he want to discuss some things. Will you come and see me in Akure? Or, okay, maybe you meet me in Lagos. This uh, weekend, I will be having uh, the seventh spirit of the Lord of God in uh, Lagos. So, but when I now called him, he said, Well, this is uh, it that they've started meeting here, and that's what he wanted to tell me that this is the third Sunday. So I said, Don't worry, we're here, and uh, we are here to, to bring uh, more blessings to the work that he has started. And also, he's a man that is going somewhere. We are here to consecrate his journey. Is journey, you know, we are all we are all journeying in God and journeying in the Spirit. So we are here to consecrate His journey. We are here after this uh, meeting is uh, your your sight. Amen. You know, your sight will become clearer. Amen. You see, your understanding will deepen. Amen. Things will become visible to you in the spirit realm. Amen. Part of the blessings I've enjoyed in God is that the spirit realm is visible for me. I can I can see things and understand things. Even when I may not say it or speak it, I, I come into an environment and understand things that is going on. The spirit realm, you walk with God, your, your visibility becomes clearer. You know, your eyes start turning to his eyes. You know, you start seeing the way he sees and understanding, in, increase in greater measure, understanding the way you understand things. And that's why so many times when we speak, we speak from his bowels, we speak from his heart. Praise the Lord. So I want us to be conscious of what I do here is spiritual. No, what we're doing here is spiritual, what we're doing here is deep. We are laying a foundation here, and uh, that will continue to flow and, be, and bless this neighborhood, bless this city, and bless the entire world in the name of Jesus. You see, anything we do for God, there are no small things in God. Anything we do for God is big and is significant. 
So there are no big things and small things in God. Everything carries his gene. Praise the Lord. Everything, everything in God carries his, his nature. Everything in him represents him. So everything in him is equal to him. Amen. So if God asks you to sit down, and you sit down, and you sit down there, and then God asks you to move, the man sitting down, and the man moving, they are on the same platform in the spirit realm. It's obedience of his word. You know, all of them are in his word. Praise the Lord. And that's the best and most significant place to be in life in Jesus' name. So I, I bless you in the name of the Father. Can you begin to release uh, the blessing on them? Can you activate the blessing? The blessing rests on the man and the woman. Oh, Jesus, they will not labor in their strength and in their energy, but you will labor in the strength and in the energy of the Lord. The Lord himself will become your strength. Can you pray things concerning them? They will begin to hear him. You say ministry is following the Lord, You're hearing him. There is no ministry outside of hearing him. Ministry is not knowledge, it's obedience. Obedience to what? Obedience to him and his speaking. God himself is word. God himself is speakings. So he's following speakings. That's the ministry. Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe on the one whom he has sent. The simplicity and the joy of hearing him and obeying him, that is the ministry. That's the ministry. If our heart wants something more, then we are deviating and departing from the path of life. Pray that the word of the Lord will become real to them. I'm talking about his voice, his speakings, what we call his will. His speakings, the man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He said, live, the word is live. Live by every word. Live your life, your life. So the word of God is, as, is, is equal to your life. Without that word, there is no life. He said, we live by every word. A proceed from the mouth of God. Job said, I've, ex I've exalted the word of your mouth more than my necessary food. Jesus said, my will, my pleasure is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. This is the meaning of life to me. When the definition of life becomes his word, becomes his speaking, you just want to hear him and move. And then you are forever satisfied in him. Just simply hearing him are moving. And the things he asks us to do, we relay this work on his true foundation. On his true, every work has a foundation in the spirit. And to every seed, God gives it his own body. Every calling has his own body. Our physical bodies differ. And so our spiritual bodies differ in terms of calling. The body of our calling, the shape and the form it will assume on earth differs. So every seed, God gives it his own body. It is in waiting for his voice. It is in waiting upon his word that the formation of the body of our movement, spiritual movement on earth appears and begins to take shape. This work has its own body. It has its own body. It has its own pathway in life. Please, can you join me in one, uh, in one spirit as, uh, as I release the blessing on them? I am a man who have journeyed in God. All of the help I have received from God, all of the mercy that I have seen in Him, I bring it upon you both in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your name, our Father. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together as you sit down? I came with uh, some people here. Amen. Amen. Please, can you appreciate my brother and uh, friend? Amen. Amen. There are people that they are, you know, anyways, I don't know, it's our carnal definition of uh, brotherhood. If you came from the same mother and stuff like that. But there are people that you have known. The relationship between you both is as thick as blood. Praise the Lord. I'm tempted to call her Daddy Bright here, but I'll still call her Daddy Bright. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we call him Keshi, call him all kinds of names. To the extent I may even forget his real name. Amen. Please, can you have uh, a celebrate oh. Mr. Oloni Yor? Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All of us will be staying in his house. All of us that uh, came for Ibadan into rest. 
and he's in our host. He may can well appreciate his family, such a wonderful wife that he has, and his entire children. Also, I want to appreciate uh, the men that uh, came with me too. We met Femi here. Femi is coming all the way from Lagos, Abiokuta, right? From Lagos to Abiokuta, and he's here. And I can well appreciate Femi. Uh, but Femi, unlikely. Amen. Amen. And uh, also, Bonnie too came in from Lagos yesterday, first to Chagamu. And uh, he came and joined us yesterday night. Bonnie, Joba, Nii, can you appreciate him? <laughs> also, here too, with us are three of my brethren that came in from Akura yesterday, just for the sake of the meetings we'll be holding today. Can you appreciate Sister Gift? <laughs> Bro, top five. And uh, Bro Shebu. You see, the beauty of this thing that we are doing is uh, they had a meeting yesterday. And it was in the course of that meeting that uh, I was presumably staring that we are going to be having meetings in the battle. And I sent a message to them that uh, can they come and they came. I even, after I even sent the message, I said, What's even wrong, Seth? Uh, this, I said, at least. I didn't know how to tell not to even come again. I tried to use language to persuade them. If it's not convenient, if it's not this, just as a deterrent. Praise the Lord. But the mistake we make with these men and women is that once you release the word, you have, you have released it. They will take it to the latter. Amen. Amen. So I'll be very, very conscious in releasing the word next time. Amen. So they had a meeting, Femi to have meetings in Abiyokuta. All day came. In fact, uh, Ni had to cancel a meeting in, a, uh, in a Lekki, a business meeting in Lekki. That he does every Saturday to be here. Also, with us here is Sister Joy. He can join me to appreciate her. <laughs> My wife don't have too many don't have too many friends. I know one of her friends is her sister. They are very close, like a friend to her. And then uh, quite one or two few people, and uh, until I saw the way she, she and Joy were befriending themselves. Amen. Amen. So she's my wife's friend, and they are all colleagues in the office. Amen. Amen. Sister Joy, thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. And uh, I also want to appreciate uh, my wife. She's not here. She will have been here with us, but she just needed to rest. And they are doing some other things there at home. So I want to appreciate sweet, sweet love in a... She's in, not, no, not in absentia because the two shall become one flesh. So in this body, two of them are living here. So I'm not appreciating her in absentia. I'm appreciating her in presence. Can you join me to appreciate my wife? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, you know, these things were moved from physical reality to spiritual realities. So as I'm standing anywhere I am, she's there with me. So even you cannot see her physically, but you know, her, yes, the reality is there. So we speak realities and not uh, not the cosmic. Praise the Lord. So quickly, I want to talk about uh, the possibilities of the new life and just a quick one: the possibilities of the new life. And I want to pick it from the resurrection. What happened? The resurrection brought in new life. We we'll use resurrection to connote, uh, to be the last for our resurrection and also ascension. So we just we use it symbolically to connote everything that uh, is in accomplished in Christ. His birth, the prophecies that went before his birth, the labor before his birth. Men labor before he was born. Men labored in the spirit. So Jesus himself came on the labors of the people. People labor, people journeyed. The likes of David, Isaiah, all of them, you know, that's why even John the Baptist, he say he will prepare the way for him to come. So men labor, so beginning from the labor of men, and even before men labor, God himself had labored. God himself is the first one that began the labor. Praise the Lord. So we we'll begin to see here the story of the creation, and then moving from there, men labor, and Jesus was born. He, he grew up, he did his earthly ministry. Give us teaching, give us words, give us blessings, and then Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and then, then the release of the spirit. You see that uh, circle, and then we're all living in these things today. Praise the Lord. 
All right, please, can I sit down? Since everybody is sitting down. Okay. Because we are coming from just one meeting, so we need to preserve these bodies. Praise the Lord. So the possibilities of uh, the new life. Now, let's get the story into, let's just get the story, let's bring it back to mind so that we can just refresh our understanding and then allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us from there. The resurrection. We, only, we attach it so many times to just the grave alone. The resurrection is deeper than the grave. The resurrection from the grave, from sinfulness, and, and uh, is deeper. The resurrection is deep. Jesus rose from the grave. Absolutely right and is correct. But it's deeper. That's why the, the life we now have is so deep and is so eternal. We must treasure it forever. So the resu- I would like to look at the resurrection on two fronts. Praise the Lord. I want to put it in a way that uh, you you get a good understanding from the start. Are you aware from biblical accounts that when God made the first creation, that was not where God was going? Praise the Lord. You see, there is the work, the the, the work, the work of God. God can do a work, does not necessarily equate to his will. You can see the work of God and the will of God. They are things that should be properly understood. God can do a work and it's not his will. His will is uh, is what he has in mind, his intention, even from the beginning. Remember the story of uh, when uh, Jesus was teaching them? They were arguing that Moses allowed us to divorce in the wilderness. What was the reply of Jesus? What did Jesus say? He said, God allowed you to divorce because of what? Because your heart was hardened. Because of the hardness of your heart, he allowed you to divorce. He said, but from the beginning it was what? It was not so. It was not God's intention. Praise the Lord. Then we can give uh, another example. When they build that temple, God allowed them to build a temple or allowed them to sacrifice. And then Jesus came and told us in, uh, in Hebrews 10, he said, you have no interest in those sacrifices. Yeah, they were the works of God. Let me, see if, let me see if we can read it. Praise the Lord. He said, when he, uh, Hebrews 10, 5, he said, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering, you would not. He said, but a body you prepared for me. Do you know, and that translation said that you had no desire for this offering, and yet God ordained it. So the works of God, not necessarily his will. Because God adapts what he does. Because God is working with men, weak men. Human beings are so weak. So sometimes he does certain things, you know. Even the law, he ordained and instituted the law. They said the law was only a schoolmaster to bring us to his eternal will, the Christ. So the law was not his will. What I mean by his will was not his divine was not his eternal intention. He tells us that God was on a journey. God was going somewhere. So when he ordained the law, it was not his will. He was not stopping there. He said, that which is not eternal. Praise the Lord. That which is, he said, God himself is eternal. Everything he does is after the order of eternity. So sometimes when God ordains certain things that are not eternal in nature, it is not him. Because he himself is eternal. His nature is everything about him is everlasting. So that which is everlasting is him. So certain times he just come up with certain things that are not him. You know, just to contain and accommodate what is the strange thing that he's saying. Just to just to wade through them. Like Brother Mecca was ministering yesterday, such a blessed meeting in Akure, the resurrection. He said when he mentioned something that the sin was alien to the Godhead. When sin just appeared, it was strange. They had not seen it before. Rebellion. It was alien, it was strange to the Godhead. But they had to walk through it. They had to institute things, they had to put things in shape just to walk through it until they can finally take it away. So how many examples have I given now? 
I said the offering that God ordained is to do that. This is the Bible I did now that uh, he said you have no desire for offering. You know, you but you made the body ready for me. You know those things they were sacrificing in the Old Testament. It, and that translation say that uh, oh sorry. And that translation say that uh, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Okay, and now I say sacrifice and offering you will not. So let's not confuse the works of God with his will. There are some works that are his eternal will. So we'll be able to understand as we look at the works of God, even workings. Praise the Lord. But and now I say sacrifice and offering you had not desired. Then no, that's number one, the offering, the things. Then the two, I said the entire body of law. God came and took away that law. Jesus came and fulfilled those laws. So that can now take you higher to a higher law, the eternal law. Which Romans chapter 8 calls it the law of the spirit of life. The law of life. Life. Praise the Lord. Then uh, another example. Praise the Lord. When God told them, uh, I'm taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. So when they got into that land, they rejoiced and they jubilated that they said, this is the promise. Uh, that which you have spoken with your hands. <laughs> you have done what? You have fulfilled it with your hands. But when Jesus was born, they made reference to the promise that was given to Abraham that it has not yet been fulfilled. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 2. No, sorry. Luke chapter 1. Look at it. John, you know, John, John could not speak. Zacharias could not speak. So after he wrote it on the, on the, on the paper and said his name shall be called John, they say his mouth opened and he started speaking. And then he began to prophesy. Are we there? Luke chapter 1 verse 67. And they asked him, he, okay, they said, uh, Zachariah asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, his, God, this I can't, he couldn't speak. His name is John, and they all marveled. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spoke and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that had them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of shy shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet, who has been since the war began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Look at verse 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he will grant us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemy, might serve him without fear. In holiness, he says something, he was speaking to Abraham something spiritual, a spiritual kingdom, which was the earthly kingdom or the land of Canaan, Amorite, Gigagite, all of them he mentioned, they were just symbolism. So when they entered into those lights, the promise was not yet fulfilled. Praise the Lord. They only enter into the symbolism of it. But it said to, verse 72, it said to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God was going, in this, when the baby uh, John was born, a foreigner to Christ, that God was going to do his eternal will. Amen. The last example which will lead me directly to the, to the body of the teaching is this. This is where I want to explain the resurrection from. Amen. From beyond, beyond the grave. I want to take it beyond the grave. And beyond sinfulness. You see, when God created the first man. Please, are we listening? When God created the first man. Where he made that man from where? Dust. That was the work of God, but that was not his will. His will. It's will that even the man that God is going to have, even men that will be on there, they will not come out of dust. They are going to come out of the world. Amen. He said, when Jesus was born, he said, the world became what? Flesh. But God made that man from dust. Because God was going somewhere. So in making that man from dust, God set the, 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 dust, the dust of the earth. So he set the earth as a limitation to man. So that first creation came with limitation. Praise the Lord. Yes. It came with physical limitation. It's just like God created man 
and then put him inside limitation. That was the first creation. That creation was weak. It was sinless, but it was a weak creation. It was weak. That's why you see they didn't even stand sin. Maybe they didn't they didn't even withstand sin for like seven days. The first the first reference instance of sin, they fell. Hope you know angels don't sleep. So even create Eve, he said the man fell into sleep. Sleep is a symbol of weakness. Adam, he said the man fell into a deep sleep, and out of his body, Eve came out. And if you go further in scripture, you understand that that sleep was even prophetic because Jesus had to fall into the sleep of death for the new creation to come out. Which was what happened, well, you know, it was a, a lot of drama happened in the garden, in, in the first creation. So, so that sinless creation, it was sinless, but it was weak. It came with so much limitation. The man was limited. Or the human creation. The new creation. Now, let's fast forward. The new creation and the new body that God is going to give us is eternal will. That one, you can call it the work of God. The first one was his work, but not his will. Not his divine intention. That was not way. God, he was still on a journey. Now, please listen. That first body that God created, God had intention for that body. You see that? You see the weakness of that creation? That weakness was for a very, was for a very high and eternal purpose. Before God made man, angels had already rebelled. He said rebellion was already in creation, disobedience. Amen. So disobedience was already there. So God created a system that was going to handle uh, disobedience. God created a system that was going to judge disobedience and they're going to bring that which is eternal. Amen. So what am I saying? So when God made that first body that came out of dust, that, made, that God made from dust, let me explain th uh, three things. In the Bible, the physical body of man came from three places. The first one came from what? Dust, right? Another one, Eve. When God made Eve, that body came from where? Not from dust. It came from the body of Adam. Right? So this physical body, God made the first Adam's body from dust. But when God was making the body of the woman, he didn't make it from dust. He made it from the body of Adam. Right? And when the third body was the body of Jesus, when God was making the body of Jesus, where did he make it from? He didn't make it from the body of uh, Mary. He, he said the word became what? Flesh. flesh. The whole drama happened in the womb of Mary. Jesus did not pick flesh from the body of Mary. If he had picked flesh from the body of Mary, that flesh would have been corrupted. Mm. That flesh would have, become, would have been a sinful flesh. Did you hear? Yes, so that's why when they were about to, to give birth, he said, uh, <laughs> when Mary asked her, how can these things be? What did the angel tell Mary? He said, the Holy Ghost will come what? You know, I preached this thing before. This uh, the, the plan. That message, the plan. I think it's on our website. The plan. The angel told Mary that the Holy Ghost will come upon you and what? And will overpower you, overshadow you. And then will, they will set you aside. Do you understand? He said, they are going to use your womb. But we come upon you and set you aside. Set the, the, the human nature aside. But inside you are going to do it. So he said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and then the power of the highest will overshadow you. We will do this work inside of you, but you are not going to have a, a hand in it. And that's how Jesus was born. The, it was the word, that's why uh, John chapter 1 verse 14 said, the word became what? Flesh. So the physical body of Jesus did not come from man. It came from the world. The world became flesh. And that's the eternal body that we're going to be having. The new creation. You know, now we're in the new creation. We're going to remove this body. When we're going to remove this body, the new body that will be clothed upon will be an eternal body. And that body is going to be a product of his world. It's going to come from God. Right? So it's not going to be coming from the dust of the earth. If we have that same body, if we go to eternity, we still commit sin. Because that body is weak. Do you hear what I say? Yes, sir. You see, if our, look at our redemption. If we were redeemed and we went to enter the same body. You see, the body was sinless, but it was weak. If they give us that same body, eh? after we redeem and say hallelujah, we we'll go to the eternity, we'll see the, we'll see the temptation for sin will keep up. If we still carry that body. 
So the resurrection was not just from the grave. The resurrection was also from the old body, from the sinless old creation. When that resurrection happened, it was beyond rising from the grave, sinfulness. God, we also resurrected from the old creation. That's why they call it the new creation. So they also resurrected from this same body of flesh that we had. Because it was a garment of clothing that we had. And we see that that body, that sinless body, Jesus came, you know, we threw it away. Jesus came and collected that body again and wore it. When he wore that body, and then the body fulfilled her calling, that body fulfilled her calling when he obeyed God. You know, it was sinless, he obeyed God on the cross, that body was used as an offering for sacrifice, both for us and that, that same body, that offering that Jesus, the obedience of Jesus judged angels. You know, angels rebel before we were born. You see, through the body, you see, Jesus said, a body you are prepared for me. In that body, God redeemed mankind. In that same body, God judged the rebellion of angels. Because angels must be judged. Jesus carried. And in that same body was the blood, was the, he said the new covenant is in my blood. The blood was in that body. So the new covenant was in that body. Praise the Lord. And was in the blood that was flowing in that body. So you see all of the mysteries that were happening in Genesis. What did I say? I said God created that uh, old body, right? Created that old creation, but he created it with limitation, right? Yes, there was a lot of limitation in that creation. It was sinless. But it was limited. Now, the resurrected body that we're going to have is going to be equal to our spirit. That body that even Adam had was not equal to his spirit. It was not equal to the capacity of his spirit. So our body and our spirit will become one indeed. Not that our body will be somewhere. Now. You know, like now, your spirit can be joining somewhere. Your body is lagging behind. He said the, flesh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is, the flesh is weak. Praise the Lord. Uh, so, so the new body we are going to have is going to be a product of the world. Just you know, like our spirit is also a product of God's word or God's spirit, whichever way you can pull it, put it. So I say the resurrection happened from two fronts. Where are the fronts? The resurrection is a resurrection from two fronts. Number one, what is number one? Are we following? I say it, the resurrection happened on two fronts. You know, I say from the, the sin came, we all became sinners, falling short of the glory of God, and uh, all of those uh, narrations which are accurate. So the, the resurrection, the resurrection from the grave, the grave is symbolic of what? Sin, death, and darkness, right? That's the, that's the grave. And I say there was also a resurrection from another front, which is a resurrection from the old world, old sinless creation that was created full of weakness and limitation, right? So what arose from that creation? And that's why it was a resurrection to a new world, to a new creation. We did not go back to the old creation before the sin, right? That's what maybe redemption now, if you want to redeem a property, they give you the same land. After everything, maybe they stole it. They, just like police say they have recovered your car. I think they give you the same car. But when our, our, our vehicle in code was lost, when it was recovered, it was not the same car that was given to us. So we're not giving the old life that we had in Eden's garden. We're giving a new life. Something higher. And something that is equal to what? To God. So the new body we're going to be possessing is not that same old body. As if we had that same body, we we'll still fall into what? Sins. Let me give you an analogy. When, you know, this, Jesus is coming to reign for a thousand years, right? Yes, sir. Can you imagine, look at the battle of Armageddon. Jesus, reigned, they say they bound Satan for a thousand years. And Jesus reigned on earth for one thousand years. And they just released Satan. When they released Satan, look at the multitude that followed him. Does it not amaze you? People that have enjoyed the reign of Jesus for one thousand years, they just released Satan, they started following Satan. You see that, that dangerous body we... <laughs> no, God, God gave us that body. Praise the Lord. You know, God gave us that body intentionally in Eden's garden. He gave us that. Satan was coming to tempt us, not knowing that that body we were carrying was to judge him. Because in that same body, Jesus judged him and judged angels. He didn't know we were carrying his judgment in that mortal flesh. No, the word, flesh was not even mortal yet. It was not mortal, it was not immortal, it was in between. It was, it was not corruptible, but it was corruptible. Wow. You understand? That which is God cannot be corruptible. 
is not subject to corruption. But that body was conditional body. It could be corrupted. Amen. Amen. And then Satan came and then corrupted that body, not knowing that that body was his judgment. Because in that body, Jesus, by obedience, joined the rebellion of angels. That's why he said, no, you know that we shall all judge what? Angels. How do we judge angels? We judge angels by our obedience. Where they stood and they disobeyed, we stand at the same point and we obey God. So, are we getting the concept of the resurrection? It brought new possibilities to life. So, we can serve God beyond this body. Not just redeeming us from sin after sin. What about the body that we carry? That body had no wisdom. From, from, you know, from what we call the, the, is it the, the law of first principle now. The body that we were created with could not withstand the lure of temptation. So our resurrection is also out of that body. While in this same body we will serve God. While in this same body, when men stood and they collapsed, we will stand, we will be standing, and all things will come and we still remain standing. Why? That's why God, after we die, after the Jesus died, you know, if you get born again, you will have disappeared to heaven. But he still left us in this body. Now I say, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So the new life is an empowerment. It's power like has never been seen before. It's a new, it's a new unveiling of power. Where you can just serve God beyond sin, beyond Satan, and then beyond the human flesh. That's the concept of the resurrection. It's not only the grave. The grave is sinfulness. But before we fell into sin, we were in a nation. Amen. We were in a nation too that we needed to be elevated higher from that nation. So you can see how powerful the resurrection is. It's our direct empowerment to the new life. Well, we can, it, it, can you see that uh, the way God started addressing men and women after resurrection? You see the kind of nobility, not the way they address them in the Old Testament. Sometimes they say you are a stiff neck. You are, have you seen that kind of thing in the New Testament? Even the way they talk. You know why? Because a new nobility has come. The human life is not the same thing. It's not the life we possessed before. Possess after the fall. Possess before the fall. It's not the life that was in Adam before he sinned. And it's not the life that is in the generation of Adam after sin. It's a total new life that came from God. It was new. And that's any time they address us, they address us with so much nobility and power. Praise the Lord. You see that even the spirit, when they come to, you see the way they talk to, you see the way they, the church was addressed in the New Testament. So the resurrection is powerful. May God grant us the wisdom and the strength to know what we have. When Jesus, when Jesus came out of the grave and then ascended to the Father. Amen. But look at it now. You see, you know, when we started to talk about physical realities are different from spiritual realities. You know, that, uh, look at it. After Jesus' ascension and then in, then he said that it's in Christ, is a new creation. That new creation, now, when Jesus ascended and went to the Father, what was given to that new creation? They gave the Holy Ghost to come and tabernacle in that new creation. It, did, it was not possible before man sinned. Now, let me tidy it here and round, and round off here so that uh, you can get it clear. You know, I say something from the beginning. This, you know, this whole thing is a drama. You don't just uh, accept things and just be moving, moving like that. You see, God is the intentional God. He does things with intention. Praise the Lord. When you see God do certain things, there are intentions, you know, in those things. Now, look at it. Praise the Lord. When, that, uh, when God did that, he just put that first creation. I said disobedience was already existing. Why do you think, you know, I kept asking this question for a long time. Why didn't they go and just eat the tree of life? You know why? Huh? They couldn't have just gone and eat the tree of life. <laughs> Amen. You must, over, you, must, you must conquer that evil tree before you proceed to the tree of life. Even angels, all of them were presented with, you know, this is what we call free will. God gave you choice. You can choose to serve him. And as at the time God gave us free will, there were two opposites that were existing. There was light and there was darkness. 
So you must have the choice to choose either light or darkness. That choice must be presented to all men. So even angels, they had that choice. They were angels that disobeyed. They were angels that obeyed, right? So even when God was going to make human beings, they have to make that choice. They have to see the two. And seeing the two, make up their mind to follow this one. That's the mystery of the human life. Why do you think in the same garden, the Eden garden was man's home. What was the evil tree doing there? And Satan was perching on that tree. You know, Satan could not have perched on the tree of life. Because that tree was different from his nature. So that tree that Satan was perching upon is, you know, is, they are, you know, when I say it's synchronizing together. Amen. So it's synonymous with his nature. So, so it was, Satan was there and then God was there. The tree of life was there the tree of, because man must be presented with choice. Because you must exercise your free will. That's why Revelation 3.21 says to him that overcomer who sit with me on the throne. The people that goes to heaven to sit with God on the throne, they are called overcomers. Because these people must be presented with the two choices. You have to choose and exercise your free will. So God created beings that and gave them free will. Beings that will serve him out of what? Out of their free volition. And so the two must be presented. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus, in doing the work of redemption on earth, he was given the, he was given the option of choice. So these things, I want to, these things, these things are, these things are so fundamental to our being. If you don't understand it, yo, I'm just born, God born again, and you are moving. No, you'll be brought into the place of decision. You must decide and choose. And so God, that's why you see, it was God said that placed those choices there. Remember when Moses was talking to him, I put before you life and what? And death. But I counsel you to choose life that you may what? Believe. So everybody must take the choice. So in working with God and everything, you'll be presented with this also. Amen. So before you come to life, you must reject, you must have, uh, you know, I say that they, must, they needed to have overcome that what? They needed to overcome that one to eat the tree of life, right? Because you'll be present with the truth. So they couldn't say, well, I did be in the age of of life that will not have fallen. If there's no added being, they had they had they will be presented with all the fullness, the full strength of the evil tree. They will behold it and then move past it to go and eat the tree of life. The same thing happened when Jesus was in the flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord. When the Holy Ghost came upon him, what happened next? He was taken to Eden's garden in the wilderness. He had to make it. He was given the full weight of the temptation. All of this kingdom, everything that we give you. He was pray- And he said, well, what did he say? He said, no, that temptation, right? And, well, the same circle was repeated in Eden's garden. When the Holy Ghost came, he was baptized and the fullness of the Spirit came. He was led him into the wilderness. He said, he was tempted 40 days. There was tempted of the devil. It was after he returned from that place. He said, he returned what? With what? With power. And he began to dispense life. He began to dispense life. And then for we, that's why before we even appropriate life, you know, we die so that we can have life. Right? We die to sin. We die to Satan. We die to darkness so that we can come to the kingdom of light. Because you must overcome these things to come to light. And that was a simple drama that happened in the Garden of Eden. But they were not able to go beyond that tree. So because the, the, the you see, we say their strength was small or Anyway, God created them in weakness. Can you see? Can you imagine? Look at Adam in trans. Adam, as at the time Adam and Eve were being tempted, they were sinless. Am I correct? As at the time Jesus was being tempted, he was sinless. But look at the understand. Look at the strength of Jesus. And the other way, there was zero strength. You can say because he had sinned, that's why he didn't have uh, strength. No, he had not sinned. Both of them had not sinned. The woman even went further to say, the serpent deceived me. But look at Jesus standing in the full stature of truth and life in the day of his temptation. Again, the simple message, the resurrection is from two fronts. What's the first front? No, come and take the mic. Come and tell us. I want to, I want to, I just want to capture our understanding. So the resurrection is beyond the grave. Amen. The grave was even a later, it was a consequence of the first human weakness that were able to fall into sin and fall into the trap of the grave, death. He would resurrect from that place and even from a higher one, which is the weakness of our creation, of our sinlessness, creation then. So, all right, please come and take the mic. Let me, let me. 
This guy will appreciate it, bro, for me as he, as he comes. Hey, bro. Okay. Okay, um, resurrection on two fronts. The first is um, resurrection, which we all know from um, death, the grave, sin, death, grave, sickness, and all of those things. And that's the first um, side of it. Then the other side, which um, Pastor made us to understand that re um, resurrection is beyond the grave. And that's the other side, um, resurrection from the old sinless creation, helping us to understand that um, uh, and showed us, took us um, back to the Garden of Eden, how man was made from the dust and how the woman was made from the body of man and how the, uh, the third dimension is that um, uh, Jesus, that Jesus was in, came from the world and how um, the new body that we will receive in the resurrection is that which matches the capacity of our human spirit. So, uh, and such that the, the spirit and the body you know, are synchronized and then we can effectively carry out the will of God. And then one other thing that pastor said is that um, the works of God might not always be the will and the intention of God. So we must be able to discern and see God's hand in what he's doing so that we can always follow him and not be stuck. So, um, so yes, so that's just like the summary. And I uh, also want to add uh, that um, the... The, the choice that, um, uh, that, that is presented to us on a daily basis, that the choice to serve God, to do the will of God or not, um, can only be made in the strength or, that we have received from the Lord. And this is what I mean by that. How are angels able to do the will of God? Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you servants of his, that do his pleasure, hearkening to the voice of his word. They can do those things because of the capacity of the strength that they possess. And um, uh, uh, Pastor Dave told us that spirit beings carry their inheritance on the inside. And that inheritance is strength. And that's why Apostle Paul was teaching us, praying that um, you'll be strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in your inner man. So that strength within, you know, is what helps us to choose the will of God again and again, regardless of all of the obstacles and all of the deceptions that the enemy throws at us. So um, spirit beings carry their inheritance on the inside. And that is what we are carrying currently. And um, there is also going to come a body that um, uh, 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 not made with hands. Okay, In this current body, we are groaning. There is um, effort, there is labor, there is struggle. But when we enter into that economy, and God oftentimes grants us ability to work in that economy again and again, but there is going to come a time when it is go that is going to be the norm, when our spirit and our, our body are working, you know, uh, like call it in, in sync together in perfect harmony to do the will of God and that is the kind of resurrection we are looking forward to Amen so that's the resurrection on two fronts thank you sir yes. uh, can we appreciate uh, Brother Femi alright who else again ok uh, Brother Tokwe please go um, Pastor was explaining the the, okay, I want Pastor to explain that if uh, every works of God does not reflect His intention, or does, does not reflect His intention, uh, why did God move in the first place? Like to take, for instance, in a creating man with dust. I want to believe there is a particular reason, even though that's not the perfect will of the Father at that time. Then should we say? God knew, of course, God knows the beginning from the end. And then is he part of the, I would say that move was a part of uh, preparing or making man to test our will in order to choose right. Because I actually want to understand why did God, because I know, of course, maybe there are some works of God that maybe by men uh, enforcing God to do some things and then you see, may God doing things that are not in, in his perfect way. And then, but concerning that particular aspect of God making a man out of dust, when man could actually be made by just pronunciation. So, I want to understand what was God thinking about. Or what, I don't know what, what I want to say. What was the intention? Intention after intention. What was the reason behind all those uh, things? 
let's because I I was thinking God made the, what what we have in the first place was and let us make man in our own image. That uh, the pastor said in one of his messages that we were born out of interaction. That interaction was what gave us to the next step in bringing out the dust. So if that is not his perfect will at that time, then why did we have that face? Can we just remove that face? And <laughs> I'm just trying to bring us from <laughs> Can any, anybody want to try? Okay. Femi, come on. Come on. All right, let's hear from Femi. This is an uh, interactive uh, uh, forum. Uh, I just want to just um, color it so that you can. <laughs> so um, I I think um, from uh, my interactions with Pastor there been some of, some kind of questions like this. I I hear something in, again and again, which is the fact that God um, God is um, patient, and that um, you know there are some things that God does. Not not it's not as if maybe God cannot with the snap of His finger just create that which He intends, but do we understand, can we appreciate that thing that he has done? And so God takes us through those processes and those um, uh, phases. It's not for God, it's for us. Uh, when we look at why did God even institute the Levitical priesthood in the first place, when the Levitical priesthood was not entirely, was not even his will, when the blood of bulls and goats was not even, didn't even reach him in the first place, so, um, and then we, we see in Romans that those things were not, were not, does not even please God. Now, Apostle Paul gave us a, a kind of understanding. He said that the law was a schoolmaster, you know, to bring God. You know, so, the law took us through a phase of, of understanding God, of knowing God, and generation after generation. Now, when we, when we look at the human race, now, when God looks at the human race, he sees a people or a person. Now, but we look at ourselves in terms of dispensations and generations and the hundred and millions. But when God looks at us, he sees man as a project, the project man. But when we are looking at, at ourselves, we look at ourselves on like a horizontal level. Okay, this is me. I'm 80 years and another person comes and that, you know, Abraham begets uh, Isaac and Isaac begets Jacob. That's man looking at it. But when God is looking from above, he's seeing his project man. Yes, there are many people incorporated in that corporate entity, man, but God looks at us as man. So, those phases, those things that God, those, um, like we'll call it now, workings that eventually lead to his will, it's for our learning, it's for understanding, it is for us to appreciate, that's my own perspective, pastor will add some more, but for us to come to a measure of appreciation of the things that God is doing and working inside of us. So, and then God is patient, uh, he's not in a hurry, he doesn't you won't say because he wants to achieve a thing, then he skips a lot of processes and then some things get lost on the way. So we so while and then while we may not be able to fully capture the reason behind these actions, it is our duty to just keep on trusting and following through the process because it is as we walk in those processes that understanding and enlightenment comes along that path. So that's my own uh, I want to call her is a uh, is it said that Pastor Devo? Okay, can we appreciate Brother Femi? Uh, uh, no, excellent one. He, he did so well. All right, let me ask for let's say for me. Okay. Yes. Um, I feel that's a very serious question. And as much as you colored it, it became more. You know, it it, it kind of expanded that um, that scope of thought. You know, and I feel uh, the only thing that comes to my mind is I I think. Pastor mentioned something that must have triggered that question in you. And it's also the answer. That's from my own pastor. Because I remember Pastor says something that we'll judge falling spirits in our body. You mentioned that just now. You know that one of the reasons for this body is so that we can judge falling spirits. And I feel that now that's me now coloring what you know. You know now I, I feel that Sin, iniquity, did not originate from man. Sin, iniquity, is spiritual. You know, angels had fallen. And iniquity is a seed. That's what I believe. Iniquity is a seed. And that seed was first known in Lucifer. 
you know, who, who himself is a sanctuary, is a custodian. So I believe that one. That's personal. Now I feel the event of God creating man out of dust came after that um, 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 misconduct had been perpetrated in the heavenlies. So I feel, now that's from my own understanding, I feel that the patience of God is to the end now, concerning the body, is to the end that he judges that iniquity. And so that's where I feel that the concept of subjecting ourselves to the will of God even comes to place. Because at the end of the day, we understand that in our body, we are judging iniquities. And that is why we will not judge these things until our own obedience has been complete. Then we'll be able to judge this obedience. So I feel God just made provision so that we, with our own will, in our own body, can actually judge the disobedience of fallen spirits. And I remember there was one Tyrannos meeting that pastor said something, which I also attributed to a sister yesterday, that the Holy Spirit doesn't, doesn't come to conquer devil for us. He raises us, and then we as man will, will enforce judgment. That the Holy Spirit does not interface with the devil. It's not a battle of... You know, they are not equals. We see them as equals. You really emphasize that. that we, they, we are not equals. So God, God, I feel God, God actually brought man forth to... Uh, maybe, let me use the word pleasure. I feel... There is that pleasure God derives from the fact that man is the one that judges spirits. And so he, he prepared that body. Even Jesus had to enforce that counsel of God in a body that was prepared for him. So I feel that there are stages. The first body is to the end that, despite the. <laughs> is the God even complaining? Now, I don't know if you are following my train. The first body, the first body, despite the fact that it seems as though man fell was that he would judge sin. So when Jesus got his own body, which is which Pastor just explained that it's the old creation, and then from that old creation, new life came, he did two things. He redeemed us first from that old body, but even though it's from that old body, he also judged that same spirit. So there is nothing else Jesus wants to do because he redeemed us from that old body and that old body was to the end that we will judge fallen spirits. That's my own personal perspective about it. Praise the Lord. Can we appreciate him very well? Amen. They have uh, before done well, bro, Femi and Bonnie, thank you for that uh, excellent uh, explanation. You see, don't forget, you know, in God's family is a compound family made up of uh, angels, spirits, man, all of us put together. Before the creation of man in Genesis, spirits had already rebelled. Disobedience was already in creation. And how do you join disobedience? You join disobedience by obedience. And in the intention of God, God was not even going to use angels to judge them. God was going to use very weak things. You know, he said he picks the foolish things, even amongst us. The foolish things to confound the wise. So that's why God picked dust. And he raised up dust in his image. And then put a demand of obedience on that dust. That by obedience, that dust will join the obedience of angels. So when we, first, when we first failed, Jesus came and redeemed us. Redeemed us. And then still us. He now empowered us and then equipped us with strength. You know, Femi spoke about strength. Strength. And then still us who will still what? Who will still judge them. By what? Obedience. You see why obedience is very key. You judge disobedience by obedience. He said, Noah by his obedience judge the whole world. Because the whole world was in disobedience. How did Jesus judge them? He said, having judged principalities and power. He made an open show of them. He said, triumphing them on the cross. They were the ones that killed him on the cross. But Jesus completed obedience on the cross. So as he was completing obedience, he was judging what? Disobedience. And all under disobedience, Satan, evil, all of them fall under disobedience. You know? So what we understand is this. That's why if you see God created man, he gave him direct instruction. He began interfering. Now. We're not talking about obedience. You should not eat this one. It's just obey him. Not about all of those other works. So it's in that obedience that we fail. But the same spot where we fail, Jesus came and redeemed us and rose us up again, you know, in a new life. 
And in that new life, we are going to stand on the same spot and going to conquer Satan. Praise the Lord. Now that you see people like Paul, you see those men that God has raised? Those set of, you say they're overcomers. You know, so on the, in this same, even not, this is not even the body that Adam had. This is a, this is a fourth, this, that body Adam had was weak. But this one is further weak. In this body that is further weak, Jesus came and gave us his spirit, equipped us inside. In this weak body that is always running to sin, we hold it back. In this same weak body, we are going to obey God. And it's the message that God will use to judge angels. In perfect condition, the sin. The imperfect condition, the sin. But us in imperfect, more terrible ground, we are still holding forth and obeying God. That's the everlasting, that's the eternal message. Do you understand? That same, we know that this was a little okay and like, like that. It's just like a man. He had 10, 10, 10 lesson t shirts. 10 lesson t shirts and he filled it. He, you know, he, he was going to school. 10 lesson t shirts and he still came work. Then now have this other young man or young lady. He only read books, no t shirt, no school, no t shirt. He came out passing work. Are they the same ground? So he's this in this body that is further weak. Did you know what Romans say? Romans 8, he say, For what the law could not do is that it was weak through the flesh. Can you see the flesh now? It's not Satan, not equ- equation. Now. Can you see the flesh? The corruption of human flesh. He said, What the law could not do is that it was weak through the flesh. The flesh. He said, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful what? flesh. In that same body that Adam could not obey God, Jesus stood in that same body and gave obedience to God. And in doing that obedience, he judged angels. He didn't need to go and face angels that I want to fight you. As he was obeying God, he was judging angels. He said, by obedience too, as we are obeying God, we are judging principalities and powers. Just simple obedience. The things you hear from God. So he said, for what the law, Romans 8, 3, he said, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. He said, God sending his own son in the image of sinful flesh. Well, say Jesus himself was tempted at all points, but without sin. In the image of sinful flesh, but God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he said, condemn sin in the flesh. In the body of man. So we can have a now, if we can walk through this flesh, you know, and walk through this very gloriously in righteousness and in holiness. He said, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. In that likeness, he sent him. So he didn't send him in the super God their flesh. He said, in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Praise the Lord. And the other aspect to it is like what uh, Nia and uh, Femi was trying to explain. He said, God is, he said, God, God, you know, okay, why didn't God create the whole world in one day? Why was he, how, how did he take six days? Was he tired when he, when he said, he, what, what did he do? He said, let there be this. Was he tired? God introduced to us process. Mm. That the human race, the humanity, everything is going to be in process. So even that, what he started with the first man was still a process. If, they, if the spirits were wise, they would have left Adam, in, Adam and Eve alone. If they were wise. And if they were further wise, they would have left Jesus alone on earth. He would not die. If nobody killed him. Amen. <laughs> if they were wise... You know, so, so God introduced process. He said, day one, even when they were in the day, and God rested. He said, no, say, and God said, and it was the four days, second day. Why four days? When one, in one single word, everything can come up. Abi, just one sentence. God will just make one sentence. And everything. But God did it stages by stages, and he introduced something that we must pay attention to. You see what? Process. That's why a human being is born. You are born very small. You grow, 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 grow until you become an adult. You know, even a tree. That's why God created the mature. The, he started from the top. He created the, the chicken, right? Out of the chicken will come the egg. From that egg, a new one will be born. He didn't start from the sky. He started from the adult. But from the adult, they what? The young one will what? We come on. He didn't start from God created Adam. And Adam was crawling on the ground. Crawling. No. He created a full man. And from that full man, was going to give it to Cain and Seth. You're going to call, you know, from the adult, you're going to call the young. So that is to tell you about God was introducing another dimension of life to eternity. Which is what? Growth. Which is what process people were going to be. Measures. And that's why even we, so that's our order. We grow. 
Even after this life is over and everything, when we step into eternity, we'll still be learning God. We'll still be growing in knowledge. We'll still be growing in wisdom. Because we'll be seeing God, you know, in a new way. We'll we'll spend eternity. I will not exhaust eternity knowing and learning God. So God introduced, when God was doing those things, God was introducing something new that spirit did not understand it. They were confused. They just saw man, eh? they just quickly rushed there to go and send him. Saying that, okay, if we two can fall, let's join this one. They were just thinking like chickens. No, Satan was just thinking like a chicken. Uh, see, God just made man. Let's go and uh, let's just go and take over. How can you take over? You understand? You know, it's just like we went to uh, Mr. Bright's office now. Maybe you just peep and you saw some sugar playing in the field. You say, ah, let's go and take over. Not knowing that armed men are hidden. You just saw some small children playing. You just say, ah, let's go and take over this beauty. Uh, or you just jump inside the compound and now you now beat all those children. After beating those children again, you wanted to go and approach the house. You now saw, you saw, you saw men with a uh, heavy arm weapon coming out. That's what Satan did. Look at man. Before you know, he went and squashed the man. And after I finished all those things, then Jesus came. Amen. You know? Uh-huh. So that's how these things... Well, yeah, bro, talk, I don't know if I we'll address your question. Or if you know, you can. So that uh, he said that why did God have to uh, initiate that? Uh, why did he have to go through process? God was initiating a dimension to life. That that dimension, that dimension itself is process. That's why it took seven days to create like that, like that. He was going to do things in piecemeal and everything. Mm. Praise God. You see, I actually understand everything Pastor was saying. The aspect of a uh, process where uh, Pastor Heaven was actually talking about, I understand then your path. You know, what I have in mind, this is now a testimony, sir. It's no more a question. Is 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 um, is a testimony. What I want to say is that you see, anybody that works in here now, we strangely come into an understanding. Like this environment that we are in now. So I, I got that in my spirit. That people will walk in here and come into some understanding that they don't know before. Because what has come out now and then this environment is not just an environment. So when people come in, I just let me just release it. And then, sir, when your first statement answered my question, because I knew there was something on the table. Because when, let us make man in our own image. Before that, I knew there was a scene. I knew Satan has fallen and there's some of those things. But I knew there was something, there was a point that the Godhead is trying to prove. By saying, because I, I later get that understanding when Pastor was talking about, because God is in that business of making the foolish thing to conform the wise. In Luke 19, when Jesus wanted to enter Jerusalem, the Pharisees wanted to shut people down. He said, the stone will raise up. If they keep quiet, the stone will start shouting. The same thing, when the so-called heavenly being failed, God had to go to less, less, less things. To actually prove his point that these people, these are more, that's, let me just say, let me call it, it's not less uh, investment, so to speak, but as at that time, it was far low. And then to get obedience from there, because truly, in Luke 19, if men are stopped saying, Hosanna, the stone truly, how he's going to arrange is not my business. How the stone are going to start speaking is left to God. But what I know that the stone we actually shout and start shouting Hosanna. In fact, the trees we join. And that, that we at that particular time, the tree and the stone will be the one judging us at the same time. So I knew there was something on that table. That's something I shake. But thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. <laughs> my attention to why I, I knew that was coming. Can we stand up and pray now? Uh, understanding that the resurrection is a resurrection into a new body, into a new life, and into a new kingdom, into the eternal kingdom. Into the, the resurrection is a resurrection into the eternal body. It's a resurrection into the eternal life. It's a resurrection into the everlasting kingdom. Into the everlasting kingdom, a new life and a new body, free from all thoughts and possibility of sin, Satan, and darkness. This is our new life where we live, move, and possess our being. Jesus bless you. Can you begin to thank Him?
such power that is here on account of the resurrection. I told you, if we have the same flesh that Adam had before he sinned, and we step into the eternal future, we'll see sin there. So the possibility of sin will still be locking behind. Yeah. That's not the flesh. It's, a re- it's our resurrection. is a resurrection out of that order. It's a new, higher order. Which is the order of God himself. I repeat, if we have the same flesh that Adam had, Adam and Eve had before the sin. If we had that same flesh, it was sinless, but it was weak. If we have that same flesh, we will see sin. Even after the redemption in Christ Jesus. So the redemption is a redemption from sin, from Satan, from darkness, and also a redemption from the, the manner and the order of the old creation. And that's why in this new order, our coming is a coming to God and to innumerable companies. We are in talent and fellowship with angels. We understand them and they understand us. It's a higher order. And God is going to give us a body. The resurrection body that we later possess, I say, that body will be equal to our spirit. Just like we saw after Jesus' resurrection, we saw his body. His body and his spirit, they were one. They said they were washing him, he just migrated into heaven. And that time they were inside the room before Jesus would come and knock. But this time he did not knock, he would pass through the wall. But when he was still on earth, he could activate the miraculous power and do it. But it was not the order. Hello, listen to me. Please listen, listen. Let's get this clear. The Jesus had the power when he was, when he was physically alive. So walk through the wall into the house. He can activate power and do it. But Jesus will be walking out of order because it was not the order yet. Because the Bible says he came in the order of sinful human flesh. That's why Jesus will be hungry. He can activate a dimension that will not be hungry. But Jesus will be walking out of order. He says spirits don't break rank. When the Father sent him, he sent him in this old order. So redeem men that were in that old order. So he came with a body that was in that old order. That same body, he will use it to sacrifice and finish it, drop it on it, pick up his own body. That's how when he was playing in John 17, he said, give me the glory that I have with you, even before the foundation of the world. And when Jesus resurrected and he was when the Father gave him that glory. So when Jesus came back, when they were gathered after his resurrection, he did not come back in that old body that was in the likeness of sinful flesh. Jesus came back in the full weight of the new body. That's, right. That's why they, when they were gathered in the room, he walked through the wall. He was, he was operating in the new order. But in the old order, Jesus will not walk through the wall. He will go and knock. Because that was the order. One time he just activated a miracle in the night. When he, Peter was preaching, he said, Peter, give me, borrow me your boat, let me preach. Wasn't that Jesus did not have the power to, to miraculously stand on the water? Well, he only stood on the water, not before the crowd, but before his own disciples. He wanted to teach them something. But before the crowd, he was walking in the order that he came. That's why I say I was, you know, he respected his order, even in the flesh. He said, I was sent to the Lordship of Israel, even though he was the creator of the whole world. But he came in an order. There is an order. He said, I was sent to the lost tribe of Israel alone. The woman started now pleading. So when Jesus wanted to preach, he pleaded with Peter. Peter now gave him a, a boat. When he entered that boat, he also he, he now pleaded with Peter the second time. Please, can you roll? Peter, help me roll a bit into the, into the water. So after he sat down, he didn't supernaturally move the, the boat. Peter now rolled again. He came in an order. If you don't understand this thing called order, we'll just jam, we'll just jam spiritual things. Do you understand? You understand? So, but you say Jesus walked on the water. Before who? Was it before the crowd? Before the multitude, Jesus never did any kind of, the only, he did the normal miracles when the crowd were gathered. Even when he wanted to resurrect people, he would pick only a few people. He would say everybody should go out. Before he performed all those things, before he still selected the disciples. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So can you see the concept of what? It was an order. So when he came back, he was now walking through, but like I was telling us, you see, that's an uh, old uh, order. So our resurrection, we also when Jesus rose from the grave, and when Jesus ascended to the Father, he didn't stop there, and then he sent the Holy Spirit, then the, the circle of his life was complete when the Holy Ghost came to us. 
That was where he has been going from beginning. That God will give his Holy Spirit to men. Man in a new body. Yes. In a new spiritual body. Later on, the, that body will appear. But now it does not yet appear. Uh, it does not manifest physically, but we possess it spiritually. That's why I say I grow not to be clothed upon, not to be unclothed, but to be clothed upon with my immortal body. Second Corinthians chapter 5, when Paul was saying that we have a body from heaven, not made with hands, which is immortal in the heavens, that body, that body will soon, will soon materialize. But now we can tap into the realities of that body. So when we have that body, then God now gave us his Holy Spirit. That's where Jesus, or the whole concept of Jesus was going from the beginning. Until the Holy Ghost came to men. Men in a new nation. Praise the Lord. You see the resurrection. It's a resurrection, it's a resurrection one, out of the grave, out of sin, Satan, and darkness. Darkness. And a resurrection from the old order. Praise the Lord. So now, it now depends on you and I, how well we come into the consciousness of the new order. It is to the extent to which we come into the consciousness of the new order that these things will profit us. If we don't understand what we have in Christ, if we don't understand what the Lord has given us in Christ, we think he's coming around, we just clap hands together, do all the gymnastics and go on. He says spiritual reality that we must live in. Praise the Lord. You can obey God. Obeying God is not just a thing you will try to do. It will become a thing of pleasure to you. My food is to do the will of it. It has become food to Jesus. You know, the, you know the treasure, how men treasure food. How people spend all their life working because of food, to put food on the table for themselves and their family. Jesus said, doing the will of the Father. Obeying the Father has become like that to me. King David said, your loving kindness is better to me than life. To love God, to obey him is better than me than life. These things are possible. You see men in church, they are struggling to serve God. People in the faith, they are born again, but it's all a struggle. It's all a struggle. These are, we have not entered the reality of this thing. You are a new reality. It's a new life. With a new energy and a new strength. Me, thank you, and Femi, thank you for those uh, explanations. Thank you. It's a new strength. When we have strength from the inside, we're able to obey God. You know something about obedience? Huh? Obedience is where angels failed. And when you, where angels failed, you stand at that same spot and you are, you are, you are passing. Angels disobeyed. So it's a pleasure to obey God. That's what unlocked the highest power in the universe. Obedience. What did Abraham did? Obedience. How many mountains did he climb? How many muscles did Abraham have? Macho man. Abraham, muscle and everything. No. What did Abraham do? Depart. Leave your father's house. Thank you, sir. Okay. He joined again. Abraham separate from a uh, lot. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, he joined again. Uh, Abraham, uh, uh, this is your son. You have given me to a son. I did not send you. I did not send you. All right. Separate from that son. That was his first child. Abraham had no second. He has only one son. Forget you are the one calling him Ishmael. To Abraham, it was his son. That's right. I don't know how many of us have children here. Eh? Daddy Bright, they now tell you that Bright now that is, is not the child I promise you. You chase him out of your house. You even have, you can even say you even have uh, other children. But that was the only child. And the man was an old man. It is something years old. No possibility yet. He said, God said, is this child though? Just like, look at the way you love your, fa your family. He now said, I promise I'm going to give you a child. But it's not this one. Uh, ah. And when did they tell him? Not when they gave birth to the boy. Oh. Ishmael had grown. The boy had grown. I think it was like 14 years. Eh? 17, bright. Is he up to 14? It's not yet. Uh -huh. So maybe you, as we are going home now, you just say somebody will now come and tell that bright. Oh, you know, I know I knew I'm going to give you a family, but bright. You understand? <laughs> All these things will just read Bible and read Bible. You understand? It was only one. The boy was, Abraham was 99 years old. Ishmael was 14 years. He was an old man. And God now came and said, this is not the child I promised you. What did Abraham did? Abraham carried a bottle of water and carried one small bread and gave it to them. He said, yes, sir. He gave it to the woman. You and your son. Bye-bye. And Abraham drove them into the wilderness. If it is in Ibadan, it would have been better. 
Those days, there are warriors everywhere. And they see a woman. They will carry the woman and kill that baby. And see all those. That time was a barbaric era. Where people are fighting. So Abraham literally sent the death to go and die. Into the wilderness. So before Abraham sacrificed Isaac, he had already sacrificed Ishmael. Mm. So that's why he didn't even struggle with that one. A little, a little bit, he did his struggle in Ishmael. Oh, that Ishmael may leave. And God said, no, Ishmael cannot leave. So when it was going to, when God was going to tell him to do it for Isaac, it was a repeat class. It was a repeat class. That was not the first time he was losing Ishmael. Do you think, is there, is there network? Did he know what has happened to them? No. Whether they have died or not, he doesn't know. No, no news. So he left them, he left them, they went. You see? <laughs> but what did he say? She has separated her Ishmael. He said what? Yes, sir. Then he journeyed again. I got okay, this one is now the child. The boy had grown up. If he was a baby, it would have been okay. The boy has grown up. Abraham, carry this boy again. Put him on the Yes, sir. Before the day woke up, Abraham had gone. And then Abraham became the father of him. He became an he now became father Abraham in the spirit realm. Even when paradise is called Abraham's bosom. What did Abraham did? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see where angels failed. Where angels failed is the calling of man. Obedience. He said he obeyed him and obeyed him to the point of death. He said obedience making efficiency to Jesus. The same thing happened. He said he became a man. Even in becoming a man, he obeyed again to death. And then the death on the cross. Then God exalted him because of obedience. And the calling of man. So you see resurrection into life. We're able to obey God. And by obedience, we'll judge principles, we'll judge nations. We are going to judge this country, the, uh, the iniquities in this country by our own obedience. When God calls you and gives you a small ministry, and you are using to oppress people, and you are going to pray for Nigeria, you are just doing an exercise in futility. You have a small congregation. You are using them. And you are complaining that Nigerian leaders are using Nigerians. And you're organizing prayer is an exercise in futility. It's not a prayer, but it's your obedience. Have you obeyed the word of God? The pattern of life that God called men to live. He said that must be the greatest of all, must be the servant of all. Have you become the servant in the midst of the people that God has given you? That's your authority in the spirit realm. It's not just name. It's not anointing. Men are flocked after the anointing. And they know that it's the glory that produces results. Anybody can be anointed. A something can be anointed. But to bring the glory that it will take a Jesus and a Paul That's right. and an Abraham. Can you begin to bless him? I'm going to thank our Father. We will love him. Love makes obedience easy. It becomes easy. Love makes obedience become easy. The resurrection is an empowerment into a new body. A new body. A new living body, a new reality in our body. This will soon shut off this body of limitation. But even in our spiritual body and our immortal body, we we'll start learning to live in it to the own account of strength. The resurrection is a resurrection into a new life, it's into a new kingdom, a new atmosphere, a new a new relational environment. The resurrection out of the old. Thank you. Jesus will bless you. Jesus will bless you. Listen to me. See, eh? how do we even, sometimes we compare ourselves with men and women that are still in the old flesh. You know, I say, it's, it's the old, they, are still, they are there, they are still not born again. So they are still in the old order, right? So there is no basis of comparison. Say you are in this world, but you are not of this world. Your order has changed. How do we compare ourselves with them? They do Grammy Award, they call you, they want to give you Grammy Award as a gospel singer. Mm. When they don't know you, That's right. they say, uh, what, you say, what manner of Lord the Father has best that we should be called the sons of God. They say, therefore the world does not know us. Because it does not know him. We belong to a new order that they don't know. Mm. So how can they come and come and give you an award? Say, you are a Grammy Award winner. In gospel, when they want to do their own, let them do with their thing and stay there. The same people come and write a list of richest men, richest pastors in, uh, in, Ibado, in Oyo State. 
Do they know what they, do they know what they call wealth? Definition of wealth, is it the same thing to us and to them? If the definition of wealth is the same thing to us and to people that are still in the old order, in the old flesh, then something is wrong. Def, I mean definition of wealth. If we define it the same way, you know what we call wealth? Paul talk about the exceeding wishes of the Christ. That's the wealth in which we are constituted. That's the wealth. The old order, men, all of us are standing in this flesh, but we are living in different order. So we don't compare. Can you bless him? Can you thank him? Father, will bless you. We have activated certain things in our, in our spirit. And these things will continue to grow and build on it. As we learn, as we learn, as we live in God and come to God day by day, We'll be growing after this order, after this light. When we say, I know who I am, indeed we will know who we are. Or say, don't you know who you are? You don't know that you are going to be judging angels. And you are be sitting down before men. Me and men, don't you know who you are? You are taking your matters to men. Don't you know who you are? That you are people that will judge angels. Oh, did they just to activate certain things over the spiritual atmosphere? Of our spiritual atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere of this fellowship, as it's being constituted, this is just like giving them an oversized jacket that they will, they will be growing into it, and also to provoke the spiritual atmosphere of this land, this city of Ibado, and this nation and the whole world at large, to shine the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere over the earth, as these truths are coming forth, impartations are going on. And these impartations will be eternal. It's a fountain that men and women will continue to drink from. In the next 500 years, this fountain will still be flowing. Men and women will still be drinking from it should Jesus study. Jesus study one million years. This fountain that was opened up in this place will be flowing. The dimension has been released here. We know who we are. We understand our works. And we know what we are doing. Hallelujah, be your name, our Father. Thank you for these blessings. Thank you for great glory and great grace that is provoked in this meeting. We we'll honor you, our Father. Please let me pray for you. Have uh, something you are believing God for or something? Can you just place your hand on your chest? Let me just let me just pray for you. It could be anything. Maybe you are believing God for something. You're praying. You've been talking to Him about it. It could be healing. It could be health. It could be anything. Just it's done. Under this, under this extreme atmosphere of his great grace and his great glory and the unveiling of his word, his light and his love. Under this atmosphere of his love, it is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever your need is that you have believed the Father for, it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Amen. Oh, ministering spirits are activated over your lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They will circle the length, breadth, and the depth and height of your life and arrange things in order. Amen. All your lives will be in pleasant places in the name Amen. of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Because the needs of your people are met in Jesus' name. Amen. In this age, in this time where death is flowing, you will find life. Amen. Every one of you here, and those of us listening online, and those that are yet listening, you will find life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Life is an ordination for you. He said, With long life will I satisfy you. And I, Jehovah God, will show you my salvation. And that is your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. I bring that word over your lives in Jesus' name, Amen. over your homes, your family. And your loved one in the name of Jesus. For so eventually anyone is sick, both sickness has come and those that have not even come out yet, receive healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, and concerning this uh, meeting, this fellowship, you continue to grow. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Amen. In strength, you will grow. Amen. Materially, you will grow. Amen. Financially, you will grow. Amen. In favor with men, women, and children, you will grow. Amen. In favor with your father, you will continue to grow. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Your name is the set, uh, set free, right? Set free assembly. 
You know, they said we are assembly. In this place, men, women, and children will be like Britain. Amen. Because truth to be loved, truth to be proclaimed, Amen. and truth to be embraced. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name, our Father. Thank you for this city. Bless this city of Ibadan. Bless all your state. Your will, your counsel will prevail. In the name of Jesus. What the men of this world and the men of the, of the, other, of the dark kingdom are planned to do, their hand will not be sufficient to execute Amen. it. Executed in the name of Jesus. The Lord has spoken well, let my people go. And so in this city, your people will go forth. Amen. They will go forth unto you. Amen. They will go forth unto their destiny. Amen. Even as you have will and design in Jesus' name. Amen. Concerning our nation, Nigeria, we ask for the spirit of judgment and the spirit of truth. When your judgments are in the land, the inhabitants of the land will lend righteousness. Oh, pray for the spirit of judgment and the spirit of truth. To cleanse this land in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Your sons will arise, your people will arise and execute your mandate, your will, and your kingdom in this land. Your kingdom will prosper. Men will flock into your kingdom because it is the everlasting kingdom and it is the only kingdom. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for families. Love will be, real, love will be mighty in your homes. Amen. In the name of Jesus, they are an awakening of love in Jesus' name. Those of you who are not yet married, you will marry into a good home in Jesus' name. I grant speed concerning your marriage, it is done in Jesus' name. Some of you get married this year, some are in your due time and due season in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, our Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you appreciate your Father as you sit down. <laughs> Come on, can we celebrate God in the life of God's servant? Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Come on, celebrate Jesus, hallelujah. Um, so I want to sincerely appreciate you because um, this is a timely message. Because the greatest tragedy in life is that when a man is ignorant, the greatest tragedy that a man can face in life, when you are fighting what you don't know, or when you don't know something, um, and so I want to bless God for your life, and my prayer for you is that your wealth of revelation will not go dry. In the name of Jesus. 